Hi, this is Jeff from the Icebox Radio Theater cutting in here real briefly to ask for your help. We need your assistance to make this station and this radio theater better. And to that end, we have established a permanent a survey at our website. That's at iceboxradio.org. Just go to that website, and you can find the survey link across the top of the page there. And uh, go to that link and fill out the survey. It should only take a couple of minutes, and it just gives us a little bit of information about you and also about your preferences concerning audio drama and podcasting. Again, that website, iceboxradio.org. And just click on the survey link to participate today. Thank you so much. And now let's return to the stories. Counting down. Going live in five, four, three. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jeffrey Adams of the Icebox Radio Theater. Coming to you live from the stage of the Salty Jester in International Falls, Minnesota, we have an evening of mystery in store for you, beginning with one of our favorite old-time radio recreations, The New Adventures of Nero Wolf. We come back again and again to this series because of the amazing talent of our very own Justin Kapla playing the title role. So come back with us now to a luxurious New York apartment where we hear Wolf's assistant Archie say... My boss is the smartest and the stubbornest, the fattest and the laziest, the cleverest and the craziest, the most extravagant detective in the world, Nero Wolf. It's the adventure of the dear dead lady with that brilliant eccentric private detective, orchid fancier, and gargantuan gourmet, Nero Wolf, starring Justin Kapla. Nero Wolf had just come downstairs, having tended to his precious orchids. He was, as usual, seated in the library, which served as his office. He just dialed a phone and, with his eyes closed, was leaning back in his specially built chair, which was big enough for two, just not two, of him. Housebreaker's Market, domestic and imported delicacies. Mr. Housebreaker, this is Nero Wolf. Oh, yeah, Mr. Wolf, I was just about to ring I have you need th- of two pounds of duck liver. I do not, of course, refer to the commercialized Strasbourg pate. I appreciate the order, Mr. Wolf, but I'm very... Next, afraid- my cook Fritz informs me we require three fine fat geese. Look... Mr. Wolf, there's a little matter of the unpaid bill. Uh, you might add 12 cases of beer, a bushel of Vermont apples, green for stuffing, and a gallon of Martiza Patrisa Roman oil. Oh, Mr. Wolf, I simply... In addition, Fritz has listed six dozen eggs, four braces of Sussex woodcock, and a few pounds of Westphalian ham. Do you have all that? Well, I can get it, Mr. Wolf, but my bookkeeper Thank say... you very much, Mr. Housebreaker. That will be all. Hmm. Now then, Archie. Yes, boss? You seem worried. Oh, I am. This means naturally that I'm supposed to handle Hal's Burker's delivery boy when and if he shows. I had thought of leaving that simple matter to you. And what about the simple matter of the money? Money? I hate to bring up a vulgar subject, but where's it coming from? Oh, of course. You're right, Archie. I should have said. Said what? Charge it. Boss, look, you don't realize it, I know, but we're into the truffle broker for 500-odd bucks and change. All right, all right, give him a check then. Okay, I will give him a check, and I hope they'll let you keep your orchids in your cell. You're a wit, Archie. Uh Mm-hmm. You know, I'm on the bank's mailing list. We got a notice this morning. You don't mean... Oh, but I do. Again? You can't just take money out of an account, boss. Sometimes you gotta put some in. This is the only way to deal with the man I work for. And if I hadn't have thrown him that scare, he wouldn't have been willing to listen when the door buzzer rang and a prosperous looking young guy in the kind of clothes that don't grow on trees came in and stood in front of the boss's chair fiddling with the brim of his pork pie. My name is Oliphant, Mr. Wolf. Oliphant? Yes, Oliphant. I am the spiritual head and guiding leader of a small religious group known as the Seekers of the Inner Power. I see. Also a man addicted to marrying neither wisely nor well, but often. You read the papers. I do. Mr. Wolf, I'm as aware of my sin-ridden past as anyone else. The point is, 
I am no longer that type of man. Even a person such as I can see the light in time. Good. Might I ask why you've come to see me, Mr. Oliphant? I need your help, Mr. Wolf. Concerning? A certain young lady with, with whom I'm deeply in love. I beg you not to confuse the present emotion with any of my earlier escapades. What I do feel for Miss Dana is, is the pure and righteous glow of an upright seeker of the inner power. I promise to look on you as utterly redeemed, Mr. Oliphant. Proceed. By the way, do I recognize the name of your lady as a Park Avenue socialite and amateur swimming champion? Well, yes, but she's sweet, wonderful, beautiful. I've asked her to marry me, and she's given me some hope. In time, I, I fully expect to make her my wife. Then where's the problem? The problem is the presence of another man in her life. I'm sorry, sir. I'm a detective, not a matchmaker. This isn't a question of making a match, Mr. Wolf. I have much too much respect for your talents to think of offering you such an assignment. Exactly what do you want me to do, then? I want you to save Ilsa Dana's life. Her life? Mr. Wolf, this other man I spoke of is insanely jealous. Not only of Ilsa's present, but of her past as well. He has threatened to kill her. I don't doubt your earnestness in this matter, Mr. Oliphant, but how would you know? I was listening on an extension in Miss Dana's apartment a few days ago when Hunter called. Hunter? Yes, sir. Jack Hunter, known as Jack the Babe Hunter. Wait a minute. I know that canvas back. Eh? Yeah. Sure, he's a coffee and cake prelim waltzer. <laughs> no, he's not. He's a boxer. Archie's being fancy. Overlook him, Oliphant. Is Hunter in love with this lady of yours? Uh, I doubt it. He's a man of complete moral and spiritual corruption, I believe. Naturally, you would. But what are the facts? In my opinion, he's after her for her money. She has money? To burn. And you, Mr. Oliphant? Me. Can you also afford to burn? Ah. How much do you want? The answer to that would be astronomical. However, if you were to, say, leave a check for $700, I shall look into your matter the very moment I've completed a little research into the nutrition of the Polynesian orchid. Oliphant's check gave our bank account a slight blood transfusion. I think it was the boss's plan to spend a week or two in the plant room before he got busy on the case. And he'd have done it, too, if that phone call hadn't come in a little after nine just after Wolf had polished off one of Fritz's dinners and was setting back with a stein of beer in his hand. Don't disturb yourself, Archie. I'll get it. Look out you don't strain yourself, boss. You have to straighten out an elbow to reach that receiver. You have an unfortunate flair for mixing humor with impertinence, my friend. Hello, Narrow Wolf speaking. This is Ilsa Dana, Mr. Wolf. How do you do, Miss Dana? We were just discussing you this morning. So I've heard. Through whom? Ted Oliphant. I see. The young man seemed quite worried about you. The young man should tend to his own affairs. He said you were in some kind of danger. I know what he said, and not one word of it was true. Oh. I, uh, I'd like to talk with you, Mr. Wolf. I'm sure it will be an immense pleasure. Where do you live? I have an apartment at 22 Blanton Street. Can you be here soon? I can be there in a quarter of an hour, Miss Dana. By proxy, of course. The proxy, naturally, was yours truly. Ten minutes later, or twenty past nine, I walked up to Ilsa Dana's door with a noisy elevator boy giving me the double O. The reason for his interest was that her door was open and the room inside was empty except for a twisted pile of pale pink satin, which at close range turned out to be a woman, which woman turned out to be Ilsa Dana. And Ilsa Dana was dead. She used to be pretty. She isn't now. Strangulation doesn't help any girl's looks, son. Make anything of it? Well, the position of her body and the blood stains on her pointed fingernails tells me she put up a tough struggle before somebody succeeded in smothering her with a pillow from the sofa over there. Eh, yeah, figures. When did it happen, I wonder? In the last 15 minutes, I'd guess. Say, who's been up the elevator this evening? Well, nobody for her. Well, somebody came up. Well, who says not? Could have used the stairs, you know. Hmm. How well do you know Miss Dana? I know exactly zero about Miss Dana. How could you take her up and down every day and know nothing about her? That's a rule of the house to keep your mouth shut. The rule goes double when you're being questioned by a cop. A cop? Well, who's a cop? Oh, so I guess you're a cello player from the Philharmonic? Look, 
I happen to work for a guy named Nero Wolf. Oh. Heard of him? Maybe. Well, if memory comes alive, son, I might see my way clear to spend a few dollars with you. Understand? Yeah, I'll keep you in mind. Going down, mister? I spent some time trying to get sense out of the superintendent and a pair of chambermaids, but they were as quiet as a ballpark on Christmas Eve. Then I called the cops and told them about Oliphant and Hunter. By the time I got home, the house was dark and Nero Wolf was sleeping. The next morning, I gave him the details while he drank three bottles of beer. When I had finished, he sat thinking for a long time. Then he started another bottle. What about the prize fighter, Archie? Hunter? Well, I phoned the hotel he lives in before he got up. And? They told me he wasn't it. Hmm. You know, I'm beginning to think Mr. Oliphant brought us a more absorbing case than he suspected. I'm glad you like it. I don't like it. I don't like work of any variety, but this thing has its points. What do we do next? Next, we investigate my client. What? Merely because a reformed playboy employs a detective doesn't exempt him from suspicion, Archie. Now who's that? Well, I'm afraid we'll have no choice but to open the door and see. My name is Young. Barstow Young. It's nice meeting you, Mr. Young. What do you want? I want to see Nero Wolf. About? About a certain young lady with whom I am deeply in love. Well, would you repeat that? I want to see Mr. Wolf about a certain young lady with whom I am deeply in love. Her name, please? Ilsa Dana. Is it possible that you entertain plans of making her your wife? Yes, but there's a problem involved. Another man? Uh, well, yes. Then do come in. I think we've been waiting for you. Oh, Mr. Wolf? Here's another one. Ah, oh, Mr. Wolf! You've come to me about Miss Ilse Dana, sir? I have come to you more specifically about a man who has threatened her life. Hmm. How unusual. He's the treacherous kind, mild-mannered, you know, as we say in my profession, he underplays it. Your profession, then, is the stage? It is, sir. Go on, you interest me deeply. I was uh, present recently when he told her that he would certainly kill her unless she mended her sinful ways. Sinful? Well, no one denies that Ilsa has had, a, shall we say, a checkered career, but the man's attitude is totally fanatical. What is his particular brand of fanaticism, Mr. Young? Theodore Oliphant is a religious maniac. Well, what do you know? He's come to give Theodore a bad report card. I don't understand. I've come to ask Mr. Wolf to prevent his murdering of Miss Dana. Am I allowed a direct question, sir? Why, of course. Where were you between 9 and 9.20 p.m. last night? 9 and 9... Why do you ask? You said I was permitted a direct question? Oh, I was, uh... Walking in the park, as I recall. Do you make a habit of walking in the park? I, I have lately. I'm preparing for an important role in a forthcoming production. What's so important about last night? Well, from your point of view, a great deal, sir. What do you mean? Last night, Miss Ilse Dana was murdered. What? Mr. Goodwin here discovered the body. No. I'm afraid it is, Mr. Young. Well, why, why are you looking at me like that? Are you accusing me? Of... I have accused you of nothing, my dear sir. Well, uh, n now look, you're making a, a mistake. Oliphant killed her. You may be sure of that. I have your word. I know him. He was trying to reform her. He wanted to make her a devout follower of his cult, the Seekers of Power. <laughs> I heard him tell her to her face that if she refused redemption, he would see to it that she didn't live on in her wickedness. You can produce other witnesses to this? You know, in your own smug way, you're as detestable a character as I have ever... All right. All right, let's everybody take five. Yeah? Nero Wolf? He's busy. This is Archie Goodwin. You'll do, Goodwin. This is Jack the Babe Hunter. Oh, how are you? Great, except the cops want to talk to me over some murder, Fandango, because as I got it, you named my name. You got it wrong. I doubt it. But I'm coming over there to set you straight. We'll be back to Nero Wolf in just a moment. But first, say, Mr. Wolf. Yes, Jeffrey, what is it? Be quick, man. I have a mystery to unravel. Well, I don't want to take any of your precious time. Good. But the... 
but I, uh, I was wondering, how do you maintain your opulent lifestyle in these trying times? Oh, my boy, it is simplicity itself. To live with a sense of style, one need only shop at the finest establishments. Establishments like Swanky Gifts on Rainy, located downtown in International Falls. Is that so? Indeed. Swanky Gifts on Rainy has everything, from delightful treats like Ash's Gourmet Chocolates to handmade truffles and craft sodas. Plus a variety of gifts from the humorous to the sublime, sustainable kitchen items, and more. Not to mention the soon-to-expand North Wild Bookstore, providing everyone in town with that latest bestseller to read on the beach this summer. Except for me, of course. Oh, why not, Mr. Wolf? All that sunshine and fresh air? Hooey! I'd rather stay here and go on being the world's greatest detective. But, Mr. Wolf, are you seriously telling me that you rise out of that custom-made chair of yours to go all the way to northern Minnesota just to shop? Only when necessary, my boy, and only for the finest gifts, confections, and more. And that means Swanky Gifts on Rainy, 333 3rd Street in International Falls. Now, why'd you ring me in on this mess, Wolf? You knew the girl pretty well. Uh, me and how many more? Besides, what time was she murdered? Last night, between 9 and 9.20. I see. So, if you were to inform the police where you were at that time, that should be that. Yeah. By the way, Mr. Hunter, where were you at the time? I don't see your badge, Wolf. I was only wondering. I haven't been near Dana, that Dana woman for over a month. But if you're really interested, I'll give you the name of her killer. Please, do not keep us in suspense, Mr. Hunter. A couple of years ago, Ilsa financed a guy in a big and lousy Shakespearean play, closed like a clam and nothing flat. Go on. It was money down the drain, but the guy's got nerve. He was in love with her, and he figured she'd do anything for him. So he comes back to her to finance him again, this time in Hamlet, no less. I see. I don't need to tell you what a flop that would have been. You didn't tell me the actor's name, either. You know? Mr. Barstow Young just left here. Oh, yeah, he's your man, Wolf. He got so sore when she told him she wouldn't toss any more moolah into his broken-down career, he went off his rocker, tore her down. Pray tell, what's your reason for thinking so? I met him on the street one day, and he started beefing about her with blood in his eyes. It was all I could do to not punch him. The results might have been less fatal if you'd followed your instincts, sir. Nah, I couldn't. Guy's built like a broomstick. He's weak as a cat. Hit him once, he, he'd crack like dry pa plaster. Mm, I see. What's on your mind? This man you're accusing of Miss Dana's murder, Mr. Hunter, was very much in love with her. She was thinking about marrying him, he said. He said? Yes, he did. Heard from him myself. He's talking through his skull cap. He also wasn't going to marry anybody. No? No, nah, she couldn't. Why couldn't she? What? Well, she just couldn't. That's all. So long. <laughs> Well now, we got a perfect circle with everybody pointing at everybody else, and nobody able to prove a thing. What Hunter says isn't impossible, Archie. You think Young did it? I don't think anything at all, yet. But if there's anything more dangerous than a woman scorned, it's an actor scorned. We have another visitor. Who are you expecting? At this point, Archie, anybody. Hi. Oh. You. Yeah. Told you you might hear from me. Come on in. Who's this? Fella runs the elevator at 22 Blanton Street. What do you got for me, kid? Postcard. Postcard? Yeah, here. The cops missed it, but I spotted an edge stuck out on from under a rug. Nice of you to deliver yet. Or maybe he was just being curious? Who's curious? It's not every elevator boy who has a chance to see Nero Wolf in the flesh. Oh, him? Oh, come off at High Pockets. I'm here because you mentioned something about spending a few bucks. I wouldn't cross the street to see the best gumshoe that ever breathed. Look, gumshoes don't breathe, and how would you like a sock right Archie, in the... Archie, Archie, pay him and let him go. Yeah, pay me and let me go. Sure, Mr. Wolf. Here you are. Thanks. Don't mention it. Any time, pal. Any time. How do you like that fresh little punk? Archie, the lad has done as nobly. Yeah? A typewritten card addressed to Miss Ilse Dana. What's it say? 
rather peculiar message. Have you prayed tonight? Signed with a single letter O. Have you prayed tonight? Yes. Signed O? Exactly. Weird, isn't it? What's weird about it? Nothing could be plainer. Have you prayed tonight? Now I ask you, who is the man in this deal that's interested in praying? All of us, I hope, are God-fearing. All right, but I ask you again, what does O stand for? Well, it could stand for O'Brien, Obituary, Omaha... What about Oliphant? Oliphant, too. What's with this indifference? The case is cracking and you slough it off. You remember what Young said? Oliphant threatened to kill her because she wouldn't join that cockeyed movement of his. Don't exhaust yourself, Archie. We have a hard night ahead. Yes, but I don't understand why you're... I don't mean to stifle your imagination, my friend, but if you'd reserve your deductions for a little while, you could lend me some much-needed assistance. What do you want? I want you to become a burglar. A burglar? I want you to hurry over to the dead woman's apartment on Branton Street and ransack it. For what? How do I know? We need help. Anything may help us. Go through the place with a fine-tooth comb. I tore the late Ilsa Dana's apartment to shreds, but I saw nothing. Then just as I was about to give it up as a bum job, I noticed a little writing desk in the living room, pried the lock, and spotted something among the pile of papers that didn't belong in any well-to-do flat. It was a pawn ticket, lot 8M046, and the address was a pawn shop around the corner on 6th Avenue. It wasn't more than 90 seconds later I walked into the joint and tossed the ticket across the counter. All this, yeah? You want to redeem it? And fast pops. Yeah, it's nothing that's worth much, mister. No? No. Nah. Well, what is it? This. Small steel filing box. Hmm. Anything in it? I don't know. Came to me locked. Never been able to get it open. We got it open, Wolf and I. Smashed the front end with a poker. There were some odds and ends inside, old earrings, some thumbtacks, a cigarette lighter. Just trash. Then the boss stuck his fingers in and pulled out a plum. This is it. What do you mean, this is it? You fail to recognize this classic document? Huh? A marriage license, Archie. A marriage license. Yeah? Well, whose marriage license? Well, the wording is self-explanatory. Listen. This is to certify, etc., etc., thus licensing on this third day of May, 1946, the marriage of Miss Ilsa Dana and Mr. Johann Jaeger. Johann Jaeger? Exactly. Well, who in the world is Johann Jaeger? Well, we'll soon see. I don't get it. I can understand. It's a befuddling little puzzle. It would be very easy for one to make a fatal mistake here. But of course, you won't. I won't. <laughs> Three hours later, I'd herded all the suspects into the office. Wolf sat in his chair and glared at them. Oliphant, Young, and Hunter. It was tense and tight, and the boss let it stay that way, saying not a word to anybody while he calmly sipped his beer. It was Oliphant who cracked first. I didn't kill Ilsa. I couldn't have. Jealousy is a very compelling motive, Mr. Oliphant, and you came to me, you'll remember, complaining there was another man in Ilsa Dana's life. Whatever I complained about, as jealous as I was, I didn't kill her as the sacred power as my holy judge. Being unacquainted with your sacred power, I'll have to ask you for a better authority. Sacred power, ha! It simply wouldn't have been possible for me to have done it. Why not? Yeah, why not? Because... I was at Mickey's Night Owl Club last night, from 7 until 4 a.m. Contemplating the sacred power, no doubt. That can be proved, Mr. Oliphant? Oh, just let me call now. Let the head waiter tell you. Mm. I'll take your embarrassment as an indication you're telling the truth. Hey, wait a minute. You can't let him off like that. Oh, don't be bothersome, Archie. Yeah, but we got that card. He wrote that, said, Have you prayed tonight? Signed with his initial. He didn't write that card, Archie. Now look, And the O is not his initial. Is it, Mr. Bosto Young? I'm afraid I don't understand. On the contrary, I'm afraid you do. But for the record, I'll explain. Uh, Archie? Yes, boss? Hand Mr. Young that large red volume off the shelf behind Mr. Hunter's head. This one? That one, thank you. Now then, Mr. Young, you'll favor me by opening the volume to page 1133. But why? Open it, sir. All right, good. 
We'll now count six lines down from the top and read what you see. Have you prayed tonight? Thank you, Mr. Young. What the devil is going on? Mr. Young has just given us a reading from a tragedy. The line, have you prayed tonight, is spoken by the hero to the heroine just before he murders her. The name of that heroine is Desdemona, and the hero, as I'm sure you all know, is Othello. Othello? The O was not for Oliphant, Archie. Othello, I think, was the Shakespearean play that Miss Dana financed for our Mr. Young. And knowing she would recognize the quotation as well as the threat behind it, he sent it to her to warn her that he meant to murder her. You won't have the unmitigated gall to deny that, will you, Mr. Young? No, no, I I don't deny it. Do I call the police? But I didn't kill her. The fact that I set the car doesn't mean I killed her. Well, it will do for my money. But not for mine, Archie. What? Mr. Young couldn't have killed Miss Nana. Why not? Because he lacks the strength to strangle such a healthy young woman. A champion athlete, wide awake and full of fight. He was rather afraid of her, as we know. And smothering Miss Dana with that pillow was no easy task. She struggled. Therefore, clawed the wrist of a murderer. I'm sure if you examine Mr. Young's wrist, you'll find no scratches or scars. Here, let me see. Go ahead. Well, Archie? Yeah, you're right. Nothing. I was sure there wouldn't be. The person to kill Miss Dana was a powerful physical specimen. Yeah? Yes, Mr. Hunter. In all probability, a professional athlete. A muscular man in good condition. You pointing at me? Seems quite likely, doesn't it? Ah, you're out of your head. Am I? Yeah. Ilse Dana, ihr mein Frau, nicht wahr? Ah, jawohl, ich bin ja... Ah, you said ja, Mr. Hunter. And you meant ja. I asked you in German if Ilse Dana was your wife, and you, in the heat of emotion, answered me in your mother tongue. Look, what's going on here? Archie, allow me to present Mr. Johann Jaeger. Him? I've known it since we first saw that marriage license. You see, Jack Hunter is the English translation of our friend's name back in Germany, where he comes from. Well, what do you know? So, you proved nothing. Yeah, I was married to Ilse. That's why I said she couldn't marry anybody else. But I didn't kill her. She was my wife. I I loved her. Oliphant told me you were insanely jealous of her. Oh, what if he did? You know better. Do we? Sure you do. Ilsa told you herself over the phone that everything Oliphant said was a lie. Oh, very interesting. What? What? What is? How could you have possibly known what Ilsa Dana told me over the phone? I haven't mentioned it to you or anybody else. Uh, well, well, you... You see... I see most clearly, Mr. Yeager, that you must have been in the apartment with her, listening in on the extension phone, or you couldn't possibly have that information. And it was only a few minutes after that telephone call that Ilsa Dana was smothered to death. And I... I see it's about time I said goodnight! Good work, Archie. I'd advise you to sit still, Mr. Johann Yeager. I was right. I told you I didn't threaten to kill her. I... But why? I only guessed at the story, reconstructed it, so to say, but I think you and Mr. Young are to be congratulated. On what, sir? On not having won your fairy lady. You always thought of her as a sweet, demure society girl, but actually she was a vicious person. As bad as the man who killed her, if not worse. She tortured him cruelly for four long years. But how can you say that about her? How can you doubt it, Mr. Oliphant? There must have been a great many men in her life. We know of at least two, definitely, you and Mr. Young. But she was in love with me. She was in love with me. I'm sorry to shatter your illusions, but she was not in love with either of you. She was using you for her purposes. What were her purposes? Demeaning the man she married. That was her preoccupation day and night. She delighted in terrorizing him as one might in breaking a bull or taming a wild mustang. Do I come near the truth, Hunter? Yeah. Until I couldn't stand it any longer. May I ask, then, why you married her? Why? Because I couldn't help myself. I crawled before her. I married her on the terms that nobody should ever know I was her husband. She was too good for me. She told me that to my face over and over. She said we belonged in different worlds. But I was crazy about her, so I took it. What I've taken you wouldn't believe. Oh, I'm sure I would, Mr. Hunter. I'm a very understanding man. The question is, will a jury believe you? And that's something we must begin to learn immediately. Archie? Yes, sir? Phone for Inspector Kramer. You have been listening to The New Adventures of Nero Wolf, starring Justin Kapla. (laughs) 
The case of the Dear Dead Lady star Justin Kapla along with Dalton Johnson, Mitchell Erickson, Karen Schickel, Caleb Silvers, Jeffrey Adams, and I think I got everybody sound effects by Evie Conad. One more big hand. Nero Wolf in the Case of the Dear Dead Lady was written by Peter Berry based on characters created by Rex Stout. The Icebox Radio Theater's production was directed by Diane Adams. Foley sound effects created by Evie Conant. Live sound engineering by Ian Hall. This program copyright 2023 by the Icebox Radio Theater, which is solely responsible for its content, recorded before a live audience at the Salty Jester, International Falls, Minnesota. Partial funding made possible in part by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Thank you.